Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I promise a Blu-ray review, and here it is. Missing Link. <laughs> this was the latest film from Leica, the same company that gave us Coraline, along with Paranorman, Cube on the Two Strains, and Box Trolls. Yes. Hey, this is the first film that was released by Annapurna Pictures which is under the distribution of United Artists Releasing, a joint venture between Anna Perona and MGM, yeah, reviving United Artists, because usually they had released their films under Focus Features, an art division of Universal Studios. Yeah, unfortunately, the film wasn't marketed very well like they were hoping for. Yeah, it was released out of the blue in April, yeah, during spring break weekend, it was actually up against films like Hellboy, which also got a Blu-ray release. Uh, no kidding. And they had several other films uh, that continues its run, including uh, Captain Marvel. Alita Battle Angel was still there, but it was getting to the point where it's starting to be released second run. But luckily, the film did make um, over $400 uh, million dollars worldwide, which domestically it only made $85 million in North America, which that's a shame. It could have made more, but it wasn't a flop. It, it, it just could have had made more profitably. And that's the problem because people obviously are into this. Again, politics and all this other shit that's going around, they just, they just never given these films any respect. And I felt like Missing Link never got the respect it deserves. You know, I was one of the few people who went to see this in theaters. I actually had the poster, which I show you in my movie review. Yes, and I did do the movie review of this. So if you want to hear my thoughts on this film, um... Go down below on the link, you click on it, and you'll see how much I endure it. Okay, well, I may not be on top of um, all the other Leica films, uh, such as Coraline, but still, it's an underrated gem, and I think people really need to check this out because this is why stop motion animation deserves more attention than CGI animated films. Same goes with hand-drawn animated films in general, too. Yeah, I mean, I almost felt like this is just like uh, when Disney treated uh, The Princess and the Frog, or because when that film came out, they keep postponing it to a different uh, release date. Like, it was supposed to come out on the holiday season, yes, which was in on Thanksgiving. But then they had to postpone it and push it all the way to December which is on the particular competition with Avatar that was a big mistake that Disney had made so they can release uh, the film Old Dogs which should have been released uh, during the spring in 2009 yeah, Old Dogs which stars the late great Robin Williams and John Travolta yeah, that slapstick comedy um, well, anyway, a film like this, um, like uh, Princess and the Frog, they both deserve respect. You know, this is why we don't see this kind of quality anymore. And it's like it just keeps continuing to go on and on with all these CGI animated films or, or films that are done in CGI without practical effects here and there. Okay. I mean, yes, there are good CGI films out there. Again, I mentioned Alita Battle Angel is one of them. Because they definitely use stunningly awesome uh, CGI effects that they had, all visually. They did have a mix of practical in there, just not too much. But still, it looks as amazing as it could be. But we also get a lot of bad CGI these days, and yes, there's even films that are just terrible. You know, they like like films like Ugly Dolls and 
even Wonder Park. Yeah, these films suddenly get their attention. Well, surprisingly, Ugly Dolls flopped, and rightly so. Yeah, see, why can't it be a bad film that can flop, and not this? Exactly, man. That's just what pisses me off. So this is why people should give this film a chance, okay? Again, it may not be up there with Coraline, nor Paranorman, but it's still an, a great film. And I just feel like, by now, you know, this film deserves to be remembered and not forgotten. I mean, that's in my opinion, <laughs> okay? But I always support these films because I love stop motion animation. You know, think about it, man. We have films like The Nightmare Before Christmas, even James and the Giant Peach, for that matter. I mean, I, I want this to continue because of all the creativity that these guys have worked on. Yeah. I mean, sure, maybe the story is. It could be cliche, yes. It may have been done before, I understand. But as long as they do it in a different style, then this could work. So, rightly so. I know there's no 3D Blu ray for this. And from what I've heard, I know there isn't a 4K Ultra HD release. I hope Fox will someday be able to get a chance to do that. But for now, they just released this. Um, and you can see the back. <laughs> but it does contain um, all the special features on both Blu-rays and DVDs. i got to take out the slipcover. See, you see some differences. Same here. But you get more with your bargain. Yes, they even put in a Rotten Tomatoes... Uh, <laughs> Certified fresh because yes, it got great reviews from critics. So at least they know they that they're actually seeing a movie come to life. And has some great stars like Hugh Jackman, Zoe Sedona, Emma Thompson, Timothy Orphant, and Zach Galifianakis. Uh, yes, here's the code. Already used it. <laughs> No artwork on both of these, so here you go. Disappointing, I know. It looks like Fox is starting to pull a, a Disney on us now because they're now putting all their films in in different colors <laughs> without artwork. It's kind of funny though, seeing that Fox uh, is owned by Disney. Actually, what's really funny though is that. Uh, Disney um, is going to actually come up with their own uh, label for for Fox movies um, in the recent run. Like, for example, uh, the movie uh, Dark Phoenix is actually going to get the the Disney packaging, you know, the one where it has the multi-screen edition. Yeah, it's going to be pretty weird for Fox to have that. <laughs> yeah, because. I really am going to miss the traditional Fox uh, packaging that they had. It looks so much better. Yeah, they, they had better artwork too. But <laughs> not anymore. Yeah. Actually, luckily for Alita Battle Angel, it did have artwork. But you can tell it's being updated uh, in a way. They didn't have that Blu-ray uh, banner that they put in. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to talk about the the Blu-ray itself. Um, as you know, yes, the movie looks incredibly stunning. Looks as beautiful and just like how we saw it in theaters, just like how I saw it. <laughs> um, the audio is top-notch. They actually use Adobe Atmos track. I, I love how this Blu-ray actually took the guts to put that. So it makes the movie sound even louder than ever. Gives it the, a unique feel. 
and we have special features which I'm um, sad to say it's kind of disappointing but at least it looks nice for what they were doing I mean everything has to be in a short running time I mean compared to all the other Leica films that they were on blu-ray by Universal at least they put a lot of good effort to them and their featurettes were incredibly long compared to what Fox put out so that's a shame so what they have here is the commentary by writer and director Chris Butler who explains how much work and effort they had to do and explains every, every detail and all the the stories and the voice acting all the way you got the the creating Mr. Link which is only only one minute and 23 seconds just showing like a a brief piece of how they created the character you know, using the fabrication and all these other techniques you know, all the stuff they had to build to make this character come alive then there's bringing the final battle on the ice bridge to life yeah this was a very impressive uh, piece that they put in also brief yeah 146 it was at um, this was the climax scene, you know, how they created the, the entire ice bridge and it starts to fall apart, you know, during the scene the, at the end of the movie. There's the animation inspiration, which shows um, all the storyboards um, put together to see how it matches um, the quality. Three minutes and 34 seconds includes an optional commentary by Chris Butler and backgrounds with picture-in-picture -picture elements just to compare with the, the scenes. BFX a breakdown reel realizing the potential of stop motion. Yeah, this is an interesting piece. Only six minutes and five seconds. Which features Steve um, Emerson who's in charge of the visual effects for Leica. And it actually shows uh, how they blend stop motion with other elements. Yes, they even use uh, a mix of CGI and 3D effects, which is cool. Okay, let's put this right here. There's um, Oh What a Mystery, pulling the camera back on Missing Link magic. Two minutes and 25 seconds, which is just time lapse uh, frame rate that they use to, to make the film come alive. Yeah, it's just that's just what it is. Making faces, 46 seconds. Just a silly short of all the puppet faces. You know the way they they move, the way they act, all these facial expressions, that sort of thing. Yeah. Inside the magic of Leica, two minutes and 46 seconds. Yes, which has Travis Knight uh, just cheering on with the rest of the Leica team. We got a photo gallery, only lasted two minutes and five seconds. Yes, so you get to see the entire gallery of how it, how it all came to be. You can see all the, the marketing that they put into it. And the theatrical trailer. Yep. Two minutes and 25 seconds. No TV spots. I wish they put TV spots on here. That would have uh, saved uh, the rest of the other features. I wish the features were just as long. I wish they were like maybe 30 minutes or so. That's what they should have been. They should have had uh, some more interviews with the cast and crew who were being involved behind the mic. You know how they explain their characters. That's what they should have done. It would have made this uh, release a whole lot better. Um, so it looks nice, but Fox could have done so much better with this. They should have put a lot of effort. Either way, it's nice that I have the film, and 
I'll be able to watch this anytime and any place, anywhere. <laughs> so, it's the best we could do for this release. But I highly recommend picking this up for those who haven't seen this movie because this is definitely my highly anticipated film to check out and I'm just glad that I finally own this copy and hopefully I'll be able to own some more if, if the company still continues to make more stop motion animated films. I hope this company doesn't end. I mean I hope they can continue even if they started having flops. You know, hey DreamWorks have flops and look how this company continues. They still make more um, CGI animated films. So, I hope um, Laika will continue. Because, quite honestly, they haven't made a bad film. Not at all. And that's why they, they're very special to me. So that's my Blu-ray review of Missing Link. Hope you enjoy it. I know I have. <laughs> but I'm doing the best I could. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.